Well, I will start with uh, autopsy. To death of the mother has been ruled a suicide. The uh, two-year-old uh, died as a result of drowning, and uh, the five-year-old uh, drowning uh, with a contributing factor of having her uh, multiple lacerations to her throat. And do you know, you know what it was cut with? Or cut with a knife? Or? Cut with a knife. Knife from, from the home. And so uh, with the, and you said it's a, was it a five-year-old about to turn six next week? Did the, within a couple of weeks, yes. Okay, so yeah. five-year-old. Um, so was the five-year-old, did she die by being drowned? Well, the, the, well, the, the, the cause of death was drowning. Uh, the way the doctor worded it was a contributing factor was a loss of blood due to her throat being cut. Okay. Um, and it was clear by the, you know, the saying that you know, there was a significant amount of bleeding. And, uh, but the actual cause of death was drowning. So you determined, I guess, that, that, that the mother killed her two children and then took her own life? Yes. And, and how did she take her life? What was her cause of death? By hanging. And how would you, I know you said yesterday it was a, a particularly a gruesome uh, um, scene, but how, how were the, ch like, were the children in, in different rooms or where were they positioned and where was she in relation to them? The, when you enter the back door of the home, there's a sofa to the right hand side and the children were positioned on that sofa. You know, they had been basically cleaned up in water, you know, by being submerged. Uh, when the father found the children, they were covered with a blanket. And uh, again, it, it was, you know, the, the two year old boy was immediately to the right of the door, and the little girl was a little further away on a, it was an L type uh, sofa, and, and the little girl was on the other part. And did she, almost like she just like clean them and then position, like wrap them in, you said a blanket? Just a blanket laid over them, so. Okay. And was there a note explaining her actions or any investigation, uh, or through your investigation, have you uncovered any kind of notes given to people that would explain? We ha have not recovered any kind of notes um, <clears throat> outlining what, what happened. You know, we have learned and continue to learn that there was clearly some psychiatric issues with the mother. Uh, and, and again, we're, we're learning more and more about that, you know, as the hours go by. And was she diagnosed with something like was she? I, I can't say that she was diagnosed. There are some uh, court documents and, and, and DHR type documents that you know make reference to uh, her mental condition. And I know that um, her husband had, had asked for a subpoena for some psychiatric records as part of the divorce proceeding. Was um, is that what you're referring to, or are there other things that, that go in more detail? There, the ones I'm speaking of are documents from our local courts here. I, I don't know what he may have subpoenaed for his divorce proceedings. Was she trying to set him up? Some of the neighbors we spoke with made statements that she told them if anything happens to me, he did it. Was she, was this some kind of revenge? You know, was she trying to set him up to make it seem like he murdered his family? You know, I, I, I can't speak to someone's mindset or what their intentions were when, you know, they're dead and we can't talk to them. You know, but, but I will say that, you know, she has some self-inflicted injuries as well, you know, on her wrists and her neck. And I think she did make some kind of comments to neighbors that if something happened, you know, it was probably him. And uh, but again, I can't really speak to her mindset and what she was trying to do. And when you say uh, like older, older wounds, uh, or 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 that were inflicted at the same time. Inflicted at the same time. And so he's clearly Derek is not charged with anything. Um, he is not. Again, I, you know, even as of yesterday, he was cooperative, and uh, you know, we were able to corroborate some of the uh, the timeline of where he said he was and where he'd come from, and you know, he was truthful in, the, in those statements. We were able to verify where receipts that were located, and uh, and said so it's just, you know, it's just tragic, and, and you know, unfortunately, and, and I hope this stops. There were a lot of social media comments about him being responsible, and you know that that. He probably did it well. He didn't. Um, did, had she given neighbors a suitcase with a note, uh, some cash, maybe, and, and alluding to if something happens, 
groceries. She did. It, it was, uh, I think, some clothing, a small amount of cash, her telephone, <coughs> you know, which was odd because she'd given it to them the day before, and uh, some kind of note that, you know, alluding that something happened. You know, it was probably her husband being responsible. And, and this was to, to a neighbor, uh, the, the phone and the cash and the clothing? It was a, in a purple suitcase, yeah. Uh, and to a neighbor and saying, if something happens to me, it's, it's in. Yes. Um, and you said you can't get into someone's mind, obviously you can't, but I mean, that, does that seem to you that where she was going with that? that, that this is, uh, well, you, there, there are several, uh, I guess, you know, ways you have to look at it. You know, was she trying to make it, you know, seem that he did something? You know, maybe, but also keep in mind she clearly was mentally unstable. And, you know, there, again, court documents making reference to her, you know, having some mental issues. And so did he make statements, or is it your understanding that he was fearful that she might harm the children and he was trying to get the children away from her? He did have some concerns because of her behavior. And they had a tumultuous relationship, obviously. the, the uh, police department out there had been out there, I think, six to eight times. They called the police at various times on each other. Um, and, and she had gotten a, um, a protective uh, order against him. I just, I mean, how would you describe the, 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 the relationship? And, and, and was that contributing to, to the mental issues or, or the tumultuous is because of the mental issues? Well, I mean, you pretty much answered your own question. I mean, that obviously it was a tumultuous relationship. They were going through a divorce. You know, both had local attorneys. You know, there were some, I guess, court orders in place. And, you know, anytime there's a situation like that, you know, there's always two sides to it. And, I, and I'm not going to speculate, you know, which one was at fault or, you know, causing the problems within the relationship. And she tried this before, like self-harm? Had there been a history of self-harm? Not that I've been told. And uh, her family is from out of state, from Utah they, or Washington? Or they're what? both from the Utah, Washington area. Um, the husband, father, uh, actually arrived Wednesday from Utah. And, and you know, we have verified that through uh, security surveillance systems at, at areas we were able to see where he you know, arrived with the camper in tow, backed into the driveway. Again, everything he said we've been able to corroborate is you know him being truthful about it and that was the camp i guess it was ordered by the court to to get it so that they would alternate back and forth with the children with the children yep um and uh i believe i believe there was uh, just on the timeline i believe that uh, earlier this year uh she had uh filed for divorce against him and, and then that was dismissed they reconciled and, and then he filed for divorce again I think a day after the, the protective order one thing I was confused about though is the protective order was actually signed in, in Utah by a Utah judge uh, but they were living here do you, I mean do you know well the most protective orders are valid in any state um, you know again we're still gathering a lot of these documents you know we you know it, it was a you know, time-consuming scene and, and a lot of interviews to be done so you know we're still gathering documents and we're not we don't take documents from the internet to, to rely upon we have to get them from the courts to make sure they're valid and, and haven't been altered in any way so you know there, there we were made aware of a PFA being applied for in Utah I don't know that it was enforced at this point and you know, those are still questions that we're waiting I mean, I guess, I mean, regardless of, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, valid, I just, I was confused about, I mean, if they were living here at the time, why she wouldn't have filed for protective order here, and, and uh, as opposed to, to Utah, uh, and I just, I didn't know if you knew anything about whether they were sort of going back and forth, or, or, or well, whether they did here. I mean, he clearly was going back and forth, you know, I, I, whether she was traveling back and forth, we really don't know. Have you ever worked a case where a mother killed her own children and then committed suicide, or is this a first for you? Yeah, it's a first for me. Yeah, it's pretty, I mean, this is really unusual, but yeah. it's a pretty extreme case. And, and, and it, it, what more is, is left in the investigation? Because obviously it seems like this is not something that's going to result in charges and a prosecution and having to get ready for trial. I mean, is it, are there still loose ends that you tie up just, just for the record? 
there are some loose ends that need to be tied up. Um, you know, there's some things that, that we've been made aware of that I'm concerned about, and I, I don't want to uh, point fingers or speculate until we get some some of the documents. You know, but but I think that based on what I'm hearing, you know, it's highly likely some somebody within the system dropped the ball. DHR. Somebody within the system dropped the ball. So, in your mind, because he's traveling back and forth, he's not there the whole time. But there are clearly raised concerns raised about her mental stability and her and the welfare of these children. And there are red flags here. And are you saying that these children should not have been in that home? That someone that should have taken these children from the home? Clearly, that that should have happened. Um, I'm more concerned with the timing of, of when it should have happened, and again, I don't want to, until I have the documents in my hands and able to analyze them, you know, with our team, you know, and, and we'll make a decision where we go from there. Uh, what were your options on that? I mean, if you think someone in the system dropped the ball, I mean, is it is that potentially criminal, or, or, or what can you do with that? It, 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 you know, it could be or could not be. You know, I'm not necessarily looking at it from a criminal aspect, but I'm, I'm damn sure looking at it to make sure it don't happen again. And can we expect, since you're publicly raising this issue, can we expect a follow-up to what your findings are? What? Uh, absolutely. Okay. How long do you think that would take to? Just a few days. You know, uh, you know we're up against the weekend, so I'm sure not getting much today. But, but I've already asked the detectives to start gathering some of these, you know, documents. And, you know, most of their day, they just finished up with the autopsies probably 30 minutes ago. So, you know, they're finishing up with search warrants and searching vehicles and you know we have to release the house here shortly and so most of their days spent already and then will the house be because i know the crime scene takes still up are they at what point do you wrap it up at the house and, and leave yeah they're in the process of doing that now okay. and there obviously was a custody fight you know between this couple um, did, did that play a role in this do you think that you know the uh you know the, the battle over you know who, who would get permanent custody of these kids I mean, I think you could say that in any case. You know, anytime there's a, an issue with custody and, and then both sides are fighting for custody, it, it can be very volatile. And, you know, cl clearly, you know, it was here. But I, I don't know who was, you know, filing for what type of custody. And, and again, that's, that's, we have some questions that are not answered yet that I plan on getting to the bottom of, and, and we'll circle back with y'all when I do. And then this issue with the camper, uh, the, the protective order in Utah specified, I think, 10,000 feet. Uh, so by that, it would seem that the, that the camper could not legally have been just in the backyard. Did you know anything about I, that? I don't know anything about the protective order in Utah. Again, I don't know that it was ever made active. Um, you know, we, we were told about it, but don't know that it was ever validated by a judge. And you know the order about the camper came from a local judge here, and who who has jurisdiction to make those determinations here. And, and have you? I, I guess you have not yet had a chance to follow up with DHR or anyone else about sort of the systemic issues. Well, wait, I'm awaiting documents to. You know, I, I don't. I want to see some paper right now. You know, before we talk, start talking with people. Where was she found in the house? Um, in, I guess you would describe it as a closet before you get to, the, like a master closet before you get to the master bedroom. And, and she was, you know, that tied a scarf or some or a, like a silk type belt around the uh, rod in the, in the closet and, and hung herself in there. Is it in their master closet or in a closet before you get to it, the bedroom? Right before you get to the master bedroom. So like in a hallway closet? You could kind of call it. You'd have to see how the house is laid out. You've got a, you know, slight hallway coming past the kitchen, and your bathroom's right here, and there's a small closet right here, and your master bedroom's right in front of that. So it's not a typical layout that so you. a small hallway closet yeah. by the by the bathroom. But I think looking at it, it was it was serving as a master closet. Okay, but and it, was it a Jacob right across from the bathroom? to be where she committed the murders? Yes. Okay. 
and then um, is there anyone else on here?